the too long, I'm not going to watch this whole freaking recipe version of this video is simply this. Pack your lamb full of flavor. Put it over a fire that you can hold your hand over for between 5 and 8 seconds. Wait until the internal temperature reaches the low 60s. Then pull it off and rest it for at least an hour. Stick around, I've got a few more tips and tricks, and if nothing more, it should be entertaining. What's cooking good looking? Hello, I'm Tyrone. Like your shoelaces, you Tyrone. When cooking a lamb, the first thing you want to collect is a lamb. So I went to my local butcher and collected my lamb. What a fun ride that was. The lads in the butchery were most amused when they saw me riding away with it. And this is the lamb that I got. Isn't she a little beauty? The thing about lamb is it lends itself to taking on other flavors brilliantly. It doesn't have a strong flavor in and of itself. An old mutton has tons going for it. You don't want to try and mask that flavor, you want to enhance it. But with a young lamb, you want to give it some flavor. So I'm dicing up some vegetables. I've got celeriac, carrots, leeks, and onions. Half of these ingredients are being diced. The other half are being minced in the mixer that I've got on the side there. Also in that mixer is going some rosemary and some garlic. These are classic flavors to go with lamb. That gets minced into a bit of a crumble and then mixed back in with the rest of it. You don't need to be super pedantic with your mix. After that, grab your cooking wine. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. I'm using Chateau de Cardboard. Boil that down till it's about half its size. Then add some vegetable stock. I'm happy for that to simmer away in the background while I check and make sure that this lamb actually fits on my spit roast. Lo and behold, not quite. The simple fix for this, slice the shanks and bend the back of the lamb right in and attach the legs to the pole like that. This is when I filled the chest cavity with those veggies that we just finished slicing up. Bruising some rosemary, don't break it, just bruise it a little bit and fill the cavity the rest of the way with that. Then fill in with some other spices. I used salt, pepper, paprika, garlic, you know, the good stuff. Then sew the chest back together. This is a specific needle meant for using on meat to put butcher's twine through meat to hold it together. It's the biggest needle that I've ever had. And I think I tied about half a dozen loops across the chest so none of that good stuff fell out. Also, the things meant to hold the front legs onto the pole were slightly too large, so I had to tie them on. I tend to use Vegemite as a binder. Those of you who aren't Australian, Pay attention. This is the correct amount of Vegemite to use. Scrape it on so thin. In fact, put as thin a layer as possible on and then try and rub as much of it off. That is how to use Vegemite in cooking. It doesn't take much and it gives a very distinctive and brilliant flavor when you do it right. When you do it wrong, well, that's your taste bud's funeral. 
But when you do it right, it holds on some other spices to your barbecued meats very nicely. The other spices that I'm using, very simple, paprika and onion powder. Why not garlic and rosemary? Well, I have something better planned for that. Put a slight hole in the side of the lamb and stuff it with garlic and rosemary. This is much better than simply sprinkling it over the top. Then it was time to get some charcoal going. I got a full chimney load and sprinkled that across the base of the spit roast. I was too impatient to wait for that to catch on, which turned out to be a good idea because it meant all of the surroundings were still pretty cool and I could safely get the lamb on. It was about that time I realized I'd forgotten the rear prong to actually hold the pack on, so I tied it onto the pole. When playing with a lamb, you'll notice that the thickest parts, the most meaty parts, are on the rear legs and where they attach to the body, and on the front legs where they attach to the body. It's good to put the fire under those bits specifically, because they take the longest to cook through. Also, with the fire, make it aromatic. I've thrown on some rosemary and some chunks of onion. Remember that wine and the vegetable stock from yesterday? Into a spray bottle and regularly spray your lamb with it. This is a brilliant hit of flavor. Throughout the day, I regularly reloaded the fire, putting on both charcoal and some local hardwoods. Taz oak and river red gum are both great for smoking lamb. Other good woods to use are things like any of your fruit woods. Throughout the day, I regularly spritzed it and I regularly stopped to check the progress of the meat. When probing for temperature, make sure you find the deepest piece of meat. When the back legs are straight, usually it's where the thigh bone connects to the hip bone on the back legs. After about eight hours of slowly turning over a fire, the lamb had reached my desired internal temperature. I probed it and it was at about 63. I was told to aim for 65, but I thought once I'd taken it off, the ambient heat from the outside will slowly keep getting deeper. What you then do, bring it inside and don't touch it for an hour. Let it reabsorb some of those flavors in the steam. If you cut it open now, all the fat and steam will just escape. Fortunately for me, this was cooked for my birthday, which means between having it reached the desired internal temperature and actually cutting it open, I was off to laser tag with a bunch of friends. So even if I wanted to cut it open, I couldn't because I was like 20 kilometers away. I think it's worth actually seeing this whole process where I cut up the meat. That being said, that does take a lot of time, so I've included most of it at a sped up speed. The first thing that is worth doing is finding a way to remove the pole. The other thing worth doing is covering your bench with alfoil. It certainly makes cleanup a lot easier. You can see from this piece of leg that it was cooked at a fairly consistent rate. A fairly consistent medium by medium rare. There wasn't anywhere that was super underdone. And I enjoyed nibbling away as I sliced pieces off. As did other people as I invited them to attack what I'd sliced off. Filling up a bowl along the way. While you're going, don't throw away the bones. These have been barbecuing for many hours which means they are packed full of flavor. So, as you're going, when you get spare bones, chuck them into a stock pot. That's what I do with a whole rib cage. You've seen a rack of lamb ribs. 
the first thing they do is actually slice that meat off. It's not the best meat there. So what I was doing with those lamb ribs was just disassembling them for my stock pot. At the end of the night, all of the bones and all of the veggies and rosemary left over went into this stock pot. I submerged that in water and let it boil for as long as I cared to give it, which was a touch over 12 hours. Then I left it to rest so that I could actually pick up the pot because it's a very heavy pot and I didn't want to pick up a boiling heavy pot. Now, if you can't fit your biggest pot in your kitchen sink, there are other options. Now that you've made a lamb stock, what can you do with that? You can turn that into a glaze for more lamb. How you do that? 50 grams of flour, 50 grams of butter, melt that together and mix it up. And then with half a liter of that lamb stock, mix that through thoroughly and half a liter of regular old red wine. Mix that through thoroughly and you'll be left with a brilliant glaze or sauce for any future lamb that you have. With any leftovers that you have, chuck them in a bag with some of that stock and then seal that bag. When you want to reheat it, put it in a sous vide set at about 53 for two hours. Two hours is a good time. And let that come up to temp. It's a great way to store your leftovers and not ruin them the next time you want to eat some lamb. And so, eat some lamb, I did. Well done on making it this far into the video. If you wouldn't mind, could you please tap that subscribe button? It's free for you to do and it means that I might maybe make some money off this video. Now I understand you may feel like you're a geriatric cat lethargically laying in front of the fireplace on a cold winter's day. As you see the mouse totter by, it's good to let the others know that, hey, you're still alive, giving it a real crack. So maybe just lightly swipe across and then fall back to sleep. Thank you and good night.